If we again solve for dhy dx by moving the second term on the right here to the left and moving this over to the right, and then dividing by delta x over 2, then we get what's shown here on as the second equation. In other words, here is our error term when we approximate our partial derivatives with our backwards differencing expression, and this is also first order accurate. So backward differencing is also first order accurate. What about for central differencing? Well, for central differencing, we approximated the partial derivative as being the difference between hy at i plus 0.5 minus hy at i minus 0.5, and all of that divided by delta x. Well, the first equation we derived for forward differencing, that's right here, using a Taylor series expansion, has an hy i plus 0.5 term. And the second equation that we use for backward differencing, the second equation here, has an h y i minus 0.5 term. So if we actually subtract these two equations, you can see that right here, subtracting these two uh, whole equations, we can again look at the remainder term and figure out how accurate this estimate is. If we work through these steps, we end up with what's shown here, where every other term on the right side has been canceled because of the alternating signs in the backward differencing equation. So now, if we solve for this term, we're going to get dhy dx at i is hyi plus 0.5 minus hyi minus 0.5 over delta x, and then minus delta x squared. And then we have the third partial derivative with respect to x of hy, and there's more stuff here that's at position i. So what's the order of accuracy for central differencing? Well, if we drop the terms after this one, the largest remainder term that we dropped is this one right here. And this approaches zero as delta x squared approaches zero. As the space increment between our solutions of hy gets smaller and smaller, the error is going to get smaller much faster. It's going to get smaller at a rate of delta x squared. So in other words, central differencing is second order accurate, and that is better than first order accurate. So out of the three options we've looked at so far, central differencing is more accurate, but it is still fairly simple to implement. It just uses values to the left and to the right instead of just to one side of position i. Well, this is all that we're all, all that we're going to go over today, but next time, we're going to choose central differencing when we approximate the partial derivatives that we see in Ampere's and Faraday's laws. And later, after that, we're going to see how well the, our central differencing scheme works.